I'm Bruce Wallace. Uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to, um, I'm going to explain how the uh, total observation uh, box that I've come up with on the design. Um, it's um, pro probably quite a very good idea because it's, uh, it's um, very good for um, inside a uh, teaching environment where you can take the observation box to a, a bee club meeting or an event and uh, show every brood frame in a box. I don't think it's ever been done before. I've done it a few times now and it works perfectly. And the good thing about it, no bee stings. So if you've got kids or other people that aren't beekeepers, you can display the whole um, array of the, um, the box, every frame and um, in complete safety, which is a big plus. What, we're going to, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to totally lock these bees away and the field bees that are coming in from into that box, this uh, nuke hive over there will be pushed into its position. Otherwise the field bees will be coming back and there'll be nothing there for them to go into, which makes pretty well common sense. If you push it only halfway there, the bees that are going into the nuke box and into the main box will both join. Um, there's no problem about them, uh, them fighting because these two actual um, colonies are actually from the same, same box. It's just a split that I'll put over there. So you shouldn't get any um, fighting thinking that uh, it's in a robbing situation. So anyway, what we'll do now is we'll um, um, lock these girls away and um, take them up into the... Uh, area where we're going to film and, and um, explain how the whole thing works. Okay, now we're here. Oh God, that was heavy. We've got the bees in place here and I'm, they were really heavy. So now what we're going to do is we're going to uh, go into the hive and have a look. Now, as you see, no bees. Reason for that is they're completely screened off. They can't get out of there and now we're going to go into the process of how we actually get the observation box on there without the bees getting out and stinging someone. Very, very simple process. So that's what I'm going to do now. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to put the observation hive on, right, like so. Now very, very important and I must stipulate to everyone, this has got to be secured down and that's what these screws are for here. So it gets screwed into place. And now what we're going to do is we're going to pull the tray. And now the tray can be slid out. You have a closer here. When the tray comes out, it goes in its place and that stops the bees from flying out the gap where the tray comes out. So you just take it out nice and slow. and we put the screws back in. So now what we've got now is the, um, uh, the tray's been pulled, the bees are, have been released out into the observation, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna um, pull some brood frames. You can pull any one of these brood frames you like. Um, if you, um, you've got to understand that this is, it's gotta be a, a nine frame brood box, not 10 frame. The reason for that is you must have the room to be able to move the brood frame so that when you're lifting it, you're not going to roll these, especially roll the queen, because um, that can end up really bad and that's not good. So we've got our uh, lifting tool onto the uh, frames. So what I've got here is I've got a, a pointy end on, on one end and I've got a circular and hook end on the other. The pointy end is for going down in between the brood frames and prying the brood frames apart. Right, so you want to try and get a gap in between the brood frames when you're going to lift. So we're going to start off with uh, number one frame here. And by the way, all these frames are numbered from one to nine. The reason, another reason for that is because you want to put the brood frames back in the same location when you're pulling them out, which is two at a time. So you don't want to be upsetting the whole colony sequence of uh, queen laying and all that sort of stuff. So okay, so now we'll go down and we'll pull number one frame. Okay, 
So here we have number one frame and we lift that up into position and there's a small uh, locator rod that I put in the um, pole to hold it there and now it's completely hands free and suspended in the air and I don't know what's on there they're just uh, building there's a bit of brood on that one maybe the queen might be on there it's all new comb on that side so now what we do is we go down and we get number two frame what we've got to do first is we've got to put the pointy end down right in between the frames and just part the frame right what that does and as you pull it up the bees that are on there can't get up through the gap that I'm working so and then we put the hook end down and then we just slowly this is a very slow process this because you can't just rush this type of thing um, you don't want to be dropping the frame and you don't want to be harming bees so there you have number two frame I think these frames are um, uh, quite recent because I put them in as um, foundations probably three or four days ago but I can see on this side that um, it's pretty well fully laid out with uh, brood that's only new and what we got on this side I'll have a look okay so we've got a lot of um, action happening that's all got eggs in it in here there's all brood right around so the queen's doing quite well so there you have it so if you wanted to um, if you wanted to uh, you know look at other frames it's just a simple process of releasing the pin that I've got taking this frame back Remembering that you've already pulled one frame up. Uh, it's a slow process, you don't, don't rush it. All right, and just lower it down nice and slow. Now you can see what I mean by just nice and slow like you were doing if you were doing it with your hands out in the field. Now we go over to another frame. And we hook onto that one. It pulled away pretty good, so I don't need to put the pointy end down, which is good. And we pull the frame up nice and slow. So it's quite a marvellous thing. You're not hurting the bees, you're not smoking them, they're not upsetting them. And here we are right to the top. And we can bring it right over to you, to the front. So you can get a good look at what's happening in there. And then you put the pin locator pin in. And there you go. So what have we got on this one here? We've got a lot of brood on this side as well. And yes, a lot of brood on that one as well. Can't quite see the queen. I don't know if she's there. I'll have a bit of a look from this side. Yo. No, she's not on this frame. That one's pretty well laid right out. There's a few, there's a few uh, cells there that have got eggs in them. And they'll be, they'll be coming out next I'd say this frame would be pr probably not far off hatching. So, okay, we've had a look at that one. So, now what we're going to do is we're going to look at another frame. So, now you might notice we're going to put this frame back in, but all frames are different. Sometimes they're very balanced, sometimes they're not. Depends on what's happening. So, this is what this uh, section of uh, what comes with it. It's just a hook rod that goes down in through between to hook the the lower part of the frame and lift it up so as you're lowering down it's lowering down on a level surface otherwise you won't get the you won't get the frame uh, the, the uh, frame back in so we're going to go back over into the number four position the hook rod goes down through the hole the bees can't fit down through the hole and what we do is we start to lower We start the lower with the frame up. You can see what I mean. If the frame is not level, it won't go down. So now you, you're into where the frame's got to go. You can take the hook rod out. It just simply comes out that hole there. And we lower the frame in. Great thing for um, teaching kids or uh, new beekeepers in 
in clubs that come along and they don't want to spend a fortune on bee suits and all the beekeeping equipment and find out it's not for them. So this is uh, something I think is very, uh, very important. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to uh, put the bees back into their original position and uh, put the clothes off, throw us back, back in. So once again, we've got to take out, take out these screws that hold the bees in. So now you've got the slide ready to go. You've got to drop the, the gate out and just put the slide back in. So we slide it back in like that, and then you just put it right straight back in. And then you put your screws back in, just to make sure that everything's good. Now, one thing I should mention too, you can't have them out in the full hot sun like we've got today for too long. It's actually been a bit too long now, but we work really quick and we get them back into the position. Slide the nuke. Okay, so what we're doing now is we're taking out the two screws that hold the total observation on. You might see that I'll put a, a cover over the top. What that does is stop the direct rays from the sun hitting the bees. Um, they're all locked off down in there now. We take the observation off, just put it behind us over here. Then we come around the front and release the bees. Uh, take the total observation off. Go around to the front. This is the interesting part because they've been locked away. I know what these girls are like, they don't like it. Okay. And release them and they'll all go back in. Just put a lid on and just leave it a gap like that at the back so they can all come out and there's no direct um, sun radiation on them. So there you have it. So with the total observation at the back here, we just roll that to one side and let all the bees out, put the cover back on. When they come out, they'll fly back and go back into the box. So there you have it. That's uh, that's the way it's um, operated. It's um, pretty good, I think, a great tool for um, education for beekeepers.